So I wanted to share this new pass system I developed recently with you guys. In my opinion, one of the most effective aspects of jujitsu is having knowledge that your opponent doesn't have. If you think of the original UFCs, Hoist Gracie was able to submit Dan Severn because he didn't know what a triangle choke was. But now a lot of common things like arm bars and triangle chokes are common knowledge, so you don't have the edge of your opponent. So staying on the cutting edge of new modern techniques and ideas is a big foundational part of what makes jujitsu work. So this new passing system I've been using is super effective and I haven't seen it used anywhere else before. Realistically, probably somewhere someone has done it before, but I haven't seen it. When I released my vice guard video, there were some people that said that they had done it before. I can't know what everyone's done in the gym before, so I just wanted to call that out before I show it. But nonetheless, it'll be really cool to see what you guys can make of it as I show it. So I came up with this pass sequence because I was trying to work my normal passing sequence where I try to center my opponent and get their hips on the floor and build my passes from here. Often from here, I'm looking for Toriando passes where I push the leg and pull the other one or I trap a leg and start entering for a knee cut and building from here. So what commonly starts to happen here is as I control the legs, my opponent starts putting his feet in the biceps. This makes it difficult because as I try to pass, he can follow me. So one common response I'll do here is I release one grip and I throw this leg by trying to open this space so I can dig in to come in for a leg drag or a throw, a throw by pass. Another option here is I'll pummel the legs and push them down so he can't bring the legs up. But what can commonly happen here sometimes is as I'm moving by and I go for the throw by, my opponent, if he's really flexible, he can anticipate and re-throw this leg or in general when you're in the middle looping if your opponent's really fast and crazy with their legs it can be hard to get control so I was training with my friend Josh in Halifax and he's got a very flexible good open guard and I kept dealing with this issue of where I would go for the throw by and his hips are so flexible this leg would keep coming over so what I did intuitively was when I was here and the foot came up to my bicep I did the normal throw by pass I do but I kept a grip on this far leg. And what happens is when I throw this over, they want to re-loop this leg back over top, but as long as you keep this, their leg cannot come back. From here, I would continue to drive this to the floor and now he's completely stuck. So if you start trying to turn back in with your legs, he can turn in, even if he turns all the way in, his legs are stuck. If you come around this side, you can see here at a certain point, it's almost like one arm is controlling both legs. So I press this down initially. Once I get enough up, I can start bringing my left arm up here to try to go around, yeah, to try to consolidate up to like a north-south or a side control type finish. So I could be here. He starts to put the foot in the bicep here like this, and I throw over like this. Once I throw it over, I want to press it hard down towards the floor. If I'm loose, he's going to bring it back. But once I get here, exactly, even if he starts framing and turning in, I can really take my time and start controlling and finding different finish sequences. So after I discovered this pattern, I started playing with it and I came up with these three really powerful setups. So the first setup is the one we basically already went through, but I'm gonna give a few extra details. So anytime I control the pants and my opponent has both feet in the biceps here, it's opportune for the throw by. But if I have one foot on the bicep, it's hard to throw. So often I have to let go. So what I start doing is I come in grabbing, knowing he's gonna go both feet in the biceps, but I just focus on getting rid of one first. So go back. So as I come in here, I pop this one off. He puts this one in the bicep. Now when I throw over, I'm not trying to throw him all the way to the side. I'm trying to throw this over the arm. So you wanna be thinking in terms of throwing this leg over the arm rather than throwing him away because you know you don't have to worry about that far leg coming back over. Keep your knees a little tighter, right? So we're like this, right? He starts putting this foot in the bicep. I get rid of this, keep your knee tight, right? Like this, and I throw over. Even if you barely get it, keep your knee tight. Even if you barely get it over here, once you get to a certain point, he can't recover it. Keep your knees tight, see? And now I can start pressing it down here and keep moving here. See, I can start moving around this way, and your finish variations can vary a lot depending on his response, but he can't get his legs back in play. So the second setup is actually when your opponent is on a strong side tilt facing towards the side you're passing. So often when I'm going here, I'm looking to move him to the center to try to look for Toriandos, but some opponents will have a strong knee shield or they might even have this like a little bit far over because they like to invert or go for Tarika Platas. So what I found here is I get both legs and as his foot's really far over, I'm just gonna push it over top of this arm. 
Once I go here and I start to go back the other way, you can see it's gonna turn exactly back into the same pass sequence. So as I start to run back here, he turns back in to start fighting me, and now that bottom leg is already trapped, or the far leg is already trapped. Here again, he keeps fighting me. Here I start moving around towards north-south, and I can change the finish variations. I can let go with this arm and come in towards the hip to start dropping and finishing. I could also, if I feel like I can do it, I can let go of this, start pushing here. You can honestly make up your own finish variations. So the third setup is actually from a stack, and this is one of my favorites. So anytime I'm passing the open guard, my opponent's knees are really close to his chest. A lot of times I'll turn this into a stack pass sequence. Sometimes if your opponent's hyper flexible, it can be hard to finish the pass sequence from here. So what I do is I get grip on both of the legs. Instead of going for a leg drag or a diving back take, I just control both of these legs and I'm gonna start pulling this leg up and moving to the side and I'm already dragging it to the same grip set here. So now as I come around here, this leg is already stuck and he's falling into the same position here and I can start progressing. A lot of times here, the person will start intuitively feeling when you go for this, as you go here, see I like, he wants to almost stay stacked because he knows when I come around here, he can't recover. So he'll keep chasing, putting himself back in the stack and I just keep dragging this over until I eventually can bring him down. And again, from here, there's just no easy way to move and I can start progressing towards the finish. I'm gonna include some sparring clips for reference for you guys, but if you like this style of video, be sure to check out the John Thomas Lab on my website. I'll put the link in the description. I share a lot of cutting edge new ideas I'm developing on in the gym all the time there. And if you like the content or you found this technique interesting, be sure to leave a comment and let me know your thoughts.